Hi everyone and welcome back to another Pokemon VGC 2019 Ultra Series guide. We've covered four guides already within the Ultra Series and we're going to finish up with our last one today. We're going to look at the Pokemon Ultra and Across Mass to finish up with and what better way than to cover this Pokemon. It is a brand new Pokemon that we've got access to going into the Ultra Series and it's a really interesting one. One that I'm still kind of trying to get my head around but hopefully this guide helps you out getting your head around it, getting used to it, understanding how you can use it within this format because you are going to be seeing it a lot in this format. So having the basic knowledge and some ideas around what teams you can play with it, etc. It's gonna help you hopefully get into the series, have a really good time, and make things a bit easier for you going forward. I hope you are enjoying these guides so far. As always though, if you are enjoying the guides, please make sure to drop a like on this video. Make sure you do subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any subsequent guides like this coming out. And also our daily battle series, our stream uploads, flinch squad circuit, sword and shield news, everything to do with Pokemon. Just make sure you subscribe and you will catch that when it does drop on the channel. But getting on to the other guides that we've covered already in the Ultra Series, if you've missed any of them and would like to go back and check them out, we have an introduction to the Ultra Series, so it covers everything that you kind of need to know going into the Ultra Series. We had a Primal Kyogre guide, Primal Groudon guide, Mega Rayquaza guide, and they're all there ready for you to check out and make use of. They all have sample teams within them, which is hopefully something that does help you get into this format a little bit easier than normally without any sample teams, giving you just something to hit the ground running with and get started within this format. So if you'd like to check those out, make sure you do go back up here, I'll link a card for you and you can check all of us out. But getting on to today's episode, like I say, we're gonna be covering Ultra Necrozma, so I hope you enjoy it. Without further ado, let's Let's get into it. So, as always, we're going to start with a Pokemon overview. We're going to start with Ultra Necrozma. Obviously, that is the name of this Pokemon. It is a Psychic and Dragon type Pokemon. Has the ability Neuroforce. And Neuroforce, just for you guys out there that don't know, Neuroforce increases the power of moves, which would be super effective by 25%. So, giving moves that are already super effective another 25% boost on top of that, making Ultra Necrozma ridiculous powerful it has a base speed for a restricted Pokemon of a hundred and twenty nine which is just incredible and you can see over here on the left of your screen the base stat totals here you've got a base stat total of 97 HP 167 attack 97 defense 167 special attack 97 special defense and 129 speed giving a total of 754 which is just phenomenal you can see on the type strengths and weakness table here that Ultra Necrozma has weaknesses to bug. Not so common in the Ultra series. Ghost, probably quite common. Ice, common again. Dragon, not so common. Dark and Fairy, both quite common, the last two there. But it does have some nice resist to go alongside that in fighting, fire, water, grass, electric and psychic. And that's a lot to do with that dragon typing that it does have alongside its psychic typing. The one thing that is very interesting about Ultra Necrozma is when you go into games, it is not going to start off in this Ultra Necrozma form. It is going to be either Duskman Necrozma or Dawn Wings Necrozma. So we're going to hop over to the next slide and it'll explain how you can transform into Ultra Necrozma a little bit. So Ultra Necrozma to transform, it needs to Ultra Burst. And to Ultra Burst, it needs to be holding the Ultra Necrozma Room Z, which is its Z crystal, which is very interesting. So you either start off with Duskman Necrozma or Dawn Wings Necrozma, as you can see here. They're both base 77 speed stat. And then whenever you would like during a game, you can Ultra Burst. And when you Ultra Burst, you will transform into Ultra Necrozma, changing your type, changing your form into this Psychic Dragon type that we've just covered in the previous slide from either Duskman Necrozma, which is obviously the Psychic Steel type, or Dawn Wings, which is the Ghost Psychic type. And then after that, you still have access to your Z move because any subsequent turn after you Ultra Burst, you have access to its Z move, which is Light That Burns the Sky, which is a 200 base power Psychic type attack, which is 
is just crazy. Considering that this is a restricted Pokemon with such a high speed stat and then such a high signature Z move as well to go along with that, it's just incredibly powerful and very potent. Gets a jump on a lot of different threats in the format and has access to pick up the knockout on them pretty easily. It does need the right support around it and it has loads of ways to manipulate this Pokemon but we'll go through those as we go through the guide but this is just a basic understanding of how this Pokemon works and the one thing to understand as well that Ultra Burst does not conflict with Mega Evolution. So you can have a Mega Pokemon on your team, you can Mega Evolve with that Pokemon, and you can still Ultra Burst with Ultra Necrozma, which is really, really nice. So you can have a Mega Rayquaza on your team and then an Ultra Necrozma on your team. They're not gonna conflict with each other. The way that Ultra Burst works, it doesn't conflict with Mega, so you can only Mega once per game, but you can actually Ultra Burst and Mega at the same time. Z moves, they are still restricted. If you use the light that burns the sky, you cannot use another Z move, so it doesn't work like that. It's just Ultra Burst is a different type of transformation than your regular Mega Evolution that we're normally used to. So, just information for you going forward. Now, getting on to the next slide, we're going to look at the first sample set of the guide, which is going to be a Calm Mind set. So, Dustman Necrozma does have access to Calm Mind. We are going with a Timid Nature here. We've obviously holding the Ultra Necrozmium Z because you need to hold that item to actually transform into Ultra Necrozma. So, a very straightforward EV spread here of 4 HP, 252 Special Attack, and 252 Speed. So, this is just maximizing that attack stat and maximizing the speed stat to ensure that you're hitting those benchmarks with your speed, knowing what you're going to add speed, and then hitting as hard as possible. We've got a move set of Photon Geyser, Earth Power, Calm Mind, coined the name from the set, and Protect there. And just some offensive calculation examples here. And defensive, you can see a plus two special attack Ultra Necrozma, Photon Geyser versus a 4 HP, no special defense, Xerneas. Is a guaranteed one hit KO? which is the same exact calculation as the light that burns the sky. So if you can get Ultra Necrozma into a position and then fire off that Z move, then you are always gonna be outspeeding Xerneas and always gonna be pretty much guaranteeing a one hit kill against that four HP standard Xerneas variant. So you gotta be a bit careful against opposing Xerneas that are bulked out a little bit more defensively because you might not pick up the knockout there. But for the majority of the time, if you can either get to plus two and you've already burnt your Z move, you can use Photon Geyser, but if you haven't used that Z move, you can always nuke something. And Xerneas is going to be probably one of the more threatening Pokemon to Ultra Necrozma throughout this series. Defensive calculation here, you can see a 252 Special Attack Lunala Moongeist Beam versus a plus one 4 HP, no special defense Ultra Necrozma is a guarantee to hit KO. So if you can get yourself at least one Calm Mind up, you know you can take at least a Moongeist Beam from an opposing Lunala. Now, common restricted partners you're going to see with this sort of of Ultra Necrozma are something like Xerneas, Mega Rayquaza, Primal Kyogre, just a few to name. You're gonna see some non-restricted partners here. Kangaskhan, Mega Kangaskhan, Incineroar, Tapu Fini, and then Pokemon Checks you're gonna see against it. As we've already mentioned, Xerneas is gonna be quite threatening to Ultra Necrozma. It has to have the right support around it because it can't just freely sit in front of it like we've seen from some of the offensive calculations here, but it will threaten Ultra Necrozma if it is able to get its Geomancy off. And even with it, those moon blasts when you do ultra burst they are going to be hitting very hard because of that dragon typing that you do have there lunala is going to be something else that can threaten you very hard with this sort of move set as well you're going to be really struggling to hit it for very good damage and it will threaten both forms of dusk main necrozma and ultra necrozma with those moon guys beams and potential z moves as well and another pokemon just to mention especially with this sort of set is cresselia it's going to be able to sit in front of ultra necrozma or dusk main necrozma all day long and just take any attack because it's not affected by the earth power because of the, the levitate ability there and photon geyser isn't very effective because of its psychic typing so cresselia is something that does check it because it has the ability to sit in front of it and disrupt the field for your opponent supporting their partnering pokemon with speed control helping hand 
lots of different support options there that Cresselia has access to and it really doesn't care about Ultra Necrozma, especially this kind of variant. You're going to have to get a lot of calm minds up to start doing some actual damage to it within a game. That rounds up the first sample set of this guide. We'll jump into the next one which is going to look at a Dawnwings Necrozma variant. Again, I've got a very quite straightforward move set spread as well. Here we've gone for a Timid Nature once again. We've got an EV spread of 20 HP, 68 defense, 164 special attack, 4 special defense and 252 speed. We've got a move set here of Photon Guys, a Power Gem, Moon Guys Beam and Protect. You can see the offensive calculation example here. We've got 164 special attack, Neuro Force boosted, Ultra Necrozma, Moon Guys Beam versus a 4 HP, no special defense, Lunala which is on 99% so it's had a shadow shield broken here but you can guarantee that with a moon guys beam you are able to have the knockout on Lunala 100% of the time just as long as that shadow shield is broken and you will naturally outspeed it as well so if you compare it with something like scarf tapu lele dazzling gleam break that shadow shield and then nuke it after you mega evolve with a moon guys beam of your own you're sitting happy on your side of the field and you put a lot of pressure on your opponent doing that as well kind of baiting them in with the dawn wings necrozma thinking that oh yeah well i can get my z move off against that well no you ultra burst and then you're able to attack and remove it before it can do any Anything to you so just some things to keep in mind if you're in that situation yourself or you're on the opposite side of that situation defensive calculation here you can see a minus one for attack incinero malicious moon sun so incinero's signature z move and incinero does tend to carry a z move in this format as well so it's something to be aware of versus this ultra necrozma is a guaranteed hit chaos so you can always survive that as long as you have the intimidate onto the incinero in the first place obviously some incineros are are going to be a little bit more physically built so they'll be stronger attack wise than what we've used in this example but this is a good benchmark for you to kind of go off and gives an example of what you can do defensively as well as offensively with just a little bit of tweaking on the EV spread some restricted partners that you can see with this sort of Ultra Necrozma are going to be Primal Groudon, Zygarde's one that I've just thrown in there that could have a little bit of potential with it got a cover though for those two dragon types on one team it's going to be a bit difficult to get that maneuvering without some heavy fairy counters and then Xerneas again another really nice partner to pair up with Ultra Necrozma. You're going to see some nice non-restricted partners here. Mega Gyarados, a very nice one with that dark water typing. It has the Intimidate prior to Mega Evolving. Also a flying type as well, so you have the, the alleviation of those ground type attacks, which could cause you some concern, especially if Primal Groudon's out in front of you and supported well enough. Tapu Lele is going to be another one. It brings that Psychic Train, so you get an even further boost to those Photon guys as it protects you against priority attacks and other things like that and then Ferrothorn is gonna be a really nice Pokemon you know it works on the opposite side of the speed spectrum if Trick Room goes up which Ultra Necrozma doesn't really appreciate too much Ferrothorn can come in deal with those fairies and it's probably gonna be the slowest thing on the field as well so gonna be able to operate quite nicely there Pokemon checks you need to keep an eye out for if you are running Ultra Necrozma gonna be things like Eveltal dark typing especially without something like power gem which we have here we haven't got on the the previous set though i think veltal is going to be able to sit in front of ultimate cosma all day long and really threaten with those powerful dark type attacks mega gengar is another one it is going to be able to outspeed naturally ultra necrozma once it does mega evolve and it will threaten all forms of necrozma the dusk main dawn wings and ultra version with those shadow balls ghost type attacks that can be very dangerous and then prime Kyogre because of its special defense capabilities here and you're predominantly seeing Ultra Necrozma's run specially. Kyogre can stand up to it and do a decent enough job if supported well enough so it's something you can't underestimate and think well if yeah it's easy i'm going to be able to deal with that quite easily you've got to be a bit careful around it and use the tools that you have at your disposal to make sure that you're not really underestimating these sorts of pokemon right that is that sample set so we'll move on to the third one in the guide here and we're going back to dusk main necrozma i pr personally prefer dusk main as the Pokemon to evolve into Ultra Necrozma just because of the steel typing that it has. They kind of complement each other a little bit better than the Ghost type 
Zeppelin does on Dawn Wings, but that's just my personal preference. There are pros and cons to both, of course. Again, we're going with the Ultra Necros Mirum Z. It's going to be the staple on this Pokemon, so you can Ultra Burst, as we've already mentioned. Again, we're going with a Timid Nature here, and really going just for a very straightforward EV spread again, because it's so important. One of the things with Ultra Necrozma is having that speed stat and making sure that you're outspeeding big threats like Mega Rayquaza, Mega Salamence, and a flurry of other Pokemon beneath them base speed wise. And if you're concerned about what Pokemon or what base speeds, remember that we covered this in the introductory guide of the Ultra series, which you can go back and check out. We listed a lot of the base speeds and the brackets that you have to make sure that you understand going into the Ultra series, which will make things a lot easier for you going forward and into battle. So. Like I say, the EV spread again is really straightforward. We're not messing about with it very much. The special attack is there just to make sure that we are hitting as hard as possible and making sure that we are getting the KOs that we need to. Like the KO onto Xerneas with that Z move, it's so important. And just being able to outspeed the majority of other Pokemon, like we've already mentioned, is just something else that you really want to be making sure that you are guaranteeing when you're playing Ultra Necrozma. You don't really worry too much with Dusk Main Necrozma because it can still operate quite nicely because of its middle speed tiering you know you're gonna be hitting that speed tier I think raw speeds that have 141 with Dustman Necrozma with a timid nature 252 speed investment so it's not the slowest it's not the fastest either but it can still operate quite nicely as just a kind of middle tier Pokemon so move set we've got on this Ultra Necrozma is Photon Geyser Earth Power Dragon Pulse and Protect so quite a bit of coverage here you've got the Photon Geyser that you need to be able to fire off that Z move, then Earth Power gives you nice coverage against things like Primal Groudon, Incineroar, and other ground weak Pokemon that you're going to see, Tapu Koko being another one there. And then we've tagged on Dragon Pulse onto this set because I do feel like Dragon Pulse can have a nice utility on Ultra Necrozma. It gives you the ability to get rid of Mega Rayquaza, Mega Salamence, and other dragon weak Pokemon that you're going to see in the format that might not really be expecting too many dragon type attacks in the format. So it's something nice, potentially catch your opponent off guard with and just gives you decent coverage overall if you're lacking a way to attack your opponent's pokemon with photon geyser and earth power then dragon pulse will normally be there to kind of pick up and be able to cover what you can't hit with those two protect there on the end because that is pretty essential on ultra necrozma it is going to be a little bit of a glass cannon it's not going to be able to take too many big attacks you can see an offensive calculation here you've got a 252 special attack neuroforce ultra necrozma dragon pulse versus a no HP, no special defense. Mega Rayquaza is a guaranteed knockout. It is a guaranteed one hit kill, and you can do the same for Mega Salamence as well. You're gonna be able to pick up the knockout pretty easily with that Neuro Force boosted Dragon Pulse there. So really nice to be able to get two of the, probably some of the bigger threats in this format as well. And then a defensive calculation here, you're gonna see 252 attack Mega Rayquaza. Dragon Ascent versus this 4 HP, no defense, Ultra Necrozma is a guaranteed 2 hit kill. So you know, even without an Intimidate, that you'll be able to take at least one Dragon Ascent from Mega Rayquaza, and you can always hit it with a Dragon Pulse in return. And if it hasn't got the Focus Ash, or if the Focus Ash has already been broken, then you know that you're gonna be able to pick up the Knockout and beat it one on one. So you've gotta be a bit careful about the Life Orb, but you've also got things like Intimidate support to help out Ultra Necrozma if you need to against that sort of Pokemon. Restricted Partners, again, you're gonna see things like Mega Rayquaza, Xerneas, Groudon, and this is the thing I think with Ultra Necrozma, you're quite tied to what other restricted Pokemon you can actually use and build a really cohesive core around because a lot of things that you need to make sure that you're covering with Ultra Necrozma's weaknesses in mind, you're kind of limited in that respect with the restricted. So this is why we're kind of repeating a lot of the restricted partners that you're seeing throughout this guide with Ultra Necrozma. Non-restricted partners is another story altogether. There are lots of options and as you've seen through the guide we've picked a lot of different variety of Pokemon throughout so you can see here we've got Greninja, Crobat and Amoongus all nice options to support Ultra Necrozma the redirection with the Amoongus it's a nice switch in it obviously acts nice in Trick Room then you've got the Crobat there it's a very good check for things like Xerneas preventing them setting up helping you with Tailwind 
Super Fang just to chip things down for you to pick up a knockout with say Earth Power, Dragon Pulse, Photon Geyser or anything like that and Greninja with its dark typing as well has really nice synergy with a switch into that psychic typing that Ultra Necrozma and Duskman Necrozma is going to carry. Pokemon checks here, things that you need to keep an eye out and watch for are Tapu Koko, especially if it is carrying that Ferrianium Z because the Twinkle Tackle will be able to pick up the knockout on Ultra Necrozma and it will naturally outspeed you by one speed point so you need to watch out for that. There's Tapu Lele as well, tending to be scarfed in the Ultra series so they will threaten you with Moon Blasts, especially if you Ultra Burst the turn that they decide to Moon Blast you so picking your moment to Ultra Burst is going to be quite important with with Ultra Necrozma if they Moon Blast into your Dust Min Necrozma, Dust Min Necrozma don't really care about that and with the Psychic Terrain up, Photon Geyser even though it's going to be your primary option to hit Tapu Lele with, it's still going to be doing a lot of damage with that boosted terrain behind it and then Incineroar is the last one here that we're going to mention because Incineroar like most other Dark types can quite happily sit in front of Ultra Necrozma, Dust Min Necrozma and fire out and do a lot of damage back in return, you know, Earth Power has got to be something that is concerned with but if you're running assault vest on incineroar or if it's got snarl support anywhere then it's not going to be too worried about the earth powers it obviously will be neuroforce boosted but you'll be able to take at least one of those if not two if you get your evs right so it is still something you need to be a little bit aware of Right, they are the sample sets that we're going to look at with Ultra Necrozma. Now we'll move on to some sample teams for all of you lovely people. Uh, the first one we're going to see is the Duskman Necrozma, which will transform into Ultra Necrozma, paired up with Xerneas Incineroar Kangaskhan, which is also the mega of the team. You've got Amoongus and Tapu Fini there. And as always, guys, the sample teams are all in the description below. There's raw pastes and poker pastes of all the teams, so you can just grab those take them away onto the showdown ladder start playing in the ultra series and get used to playing these pokemon and i hope these are of benefit for you guys to help you get started within within the new format because i know myself one of the things that i really do struggle with sometimes is getting into the new formats and finding that place to start but with at least with these sample teams they're giving you somewhere to start with you can just grab them take them try them out if you don't like them then there's two more to try out as well if you want to play an ultra and a crossma team and Hopefully there's enough variation here for you to get something that you do enjoy and obviously this is very early stages of the format so these teams are very current for now and they probably will adapt and change as the format goes on but like I say they're a good thing for you to have access to to help you get started within the Ultra series. So the next sample team is going to be a Dawn Wings variant of the Ultra Necrozma so you're going to have Dawn Wings. Primal Groudon, Incineroar, Tapu Lele, Ferrothorn and then Mega Gyarados on there as well which is quite a nice inclusion and I do really like Mega Gyarados in the Ultra series so I hope we can see the rise of popularity of it because it's a nice switch into both Groudon Primal Kyogre, it's then got its Mega Evolution with that Dark Typing that does so well in this format as well. So I do think that is something to try out. And then we'll end up with the third sample team, which is going to be back to the, the Duskman Necrozma with Mega Rayquaza, Incineroar Greninja, Crobat, and Amoongus. So some nice odd picks there, but the team does work, and you can have a look at how the ins and outs of it, the EV spreads, movesets, and everything like that down in the description below. So like I say, I hope these serve you well, and they are there just to help you get started within the format and uh, get playing straight away. And uh, we'll finish off today's guide, as always, with the counter summaries and uh, look at some little tweaks and twerks for Ultra Necrozma. So, as so we can see that it is a dragon and psychic type, just to remind ourselves there, it has the neural force ability, giving that 25% boost on all super effective attacks which is just incredible. Uh, it's got a max speed of 199, minimum speed of 120, and your common speed is gonna be max speed. You're gonna see max speed. Everyone's predominantly gonna run max speed. There are arguments for dropping down, but I think the things that you miss by dropping down the next speed bracket and going to 181, you under speed Mega Rayquaza, you under speed Mega Salamence, I just don't think it's worth doing. So running that max speed I think is really important to having a really good effective Ultra Necrozma in this format. You know, you're going to look at things, support checklist, there's always speed control going to be very important. You're going to need Tailwind, 
counters against Trick Room because Ultra Necrozma is going to enjoy that environment very much. Icy Winds, nice. Electro Webs, nice to support it. Intimidate support is going to be so important because the Dark Types in this format, the predominantly the more popular ones, Incineroar and Eveltal, they're going to be more physically built, so you're going to need Intimidate to help against them. You're also going to need to have Ghost and Fairy Checks, two things that do really threaten Ultra Necrozma pretty heavily and it's pre-evolutions as well, especially that Ghost typing. So having a Dark type in there is going to be nice, something like Incineroar, even if Veltal works there, something like Scrafty or Mega Gyarados can also pair up quite nicely with it just for that synergy to switch in and give you a bit of room to maneuver, reposition your board position and then move forward from there. Fairy Checks, you're going to need some heavy Fairy Checks. So get those steel types at the ready they're going to need to be there to help support ultra necrozma as best they can redirection is a very nice option to have because predominantly all fairy types except dazzling gleam and ghost and dark types are all kind of single target attacks so having the redirection there to pull those away just give ultra necrozma a bit of room to operate is really really important for it and will help it out massively perform a lot better in battle and then pivot support as well so they are some of the things just to check off your list when you are playing Ultra Necrozma to try and support it a little bit better when you're playing it in game and then we're going to look at Pokemon threats. We've highlighted throughout this guide but just to reiterate these Pokemon you've got Lunala, Incineroar, Tapu Koko, Scarf Tapu Lele, that's the one I'm going to say Scarfed here because if it's not Scarfed then you can deal with it not too badly. You've got to be still very careful about those Moonblasts though because they will be hitting very hard especially if there's a Zernia with the um, fairy aura next to it you're not gonna have the best time in front of that Pokemon then Mega Gengar is another one and Greninja as well now Greninja is an interesting one it will underspeed you once you do ultra burst but it will have the ability to hit you for super effective damage with those dog pulses and it will be able to manage taking at least an earth part photon guys is not going to be effective against it and you've got to remember if you go for that z move and there are two dog types out on the field it's going to be a bit of a wasted z move so you need to keep that in mind when you do pull the trigger on that so the pokemon walls things that do wall you if you haven't got something like power gem then eveltal is just going to completely wall you it's going to have an easy time switching in on you on the earth pass photon geysers and it will be doing a lot of damage to you in return cresselia we've already mentioned because of its immunity to earth power it's not going to take too much damage from photon geyser and it can support and really disrupt your side of the field with the support options that it does have access to. Hydreigon works a little bit like the Eveltal again with that levitate ability. Not going to be really too worried about Earth Power and it really doesn't mind too much about Power Gem either. So even better really than Eveltal at walling, completely walling. Ultra Necrozma, especially if it hasn't got access to a Dragon type attack, which is its only option really to hit Hydreigon super effectively. So Hydreigon can be good if. Ultra Necrozma is missing that Dragon Pulse. Mandibuzz is going to be something else that really does very well against Ultra Necrozma for obvious reasons. That Dark type and immunity to the common Earth power that you're going to see on Ultra Necrozma. Gyarados as well and Mega Gyarados are going to do a really nice job against it. Obviously resisting that big Photon Geyser and then Scrafty on the end there just to tag on it's going to operate really nicely in Trick Room and again going to have a really good time against Ultra Necrozma so something that it needs to keep in mind going forward but that about wraps up the guide for us today guys so I really do hope you have enjoyed it. It's been really great covering Ultra Necrozma and like I say it's a really interesting Pokemon with so many dynamics there you know being able to start off as Duskmane or Dawn Wings and then Ultra Burst at any point that it wants to in a match and then become this Ultra Necrozma that's just crazy fast, crazy powerful and just operates completely differently to its previous forms. It's not conflicting with Mega Evolution as well. It has access to a Z move. It's just an incredible Pokemon. And then the type differences as well from both are just 
it opens up doors completely and it has a really nice move pool so you have a lot of options there and hopefully we've covered a few of them in today's guide just to help you get your head around what this Pokemon is about and how you can use it going into the Ultra Series but it's definitely going to be a popular Pokemon going into the, especially the early stages of this format so something that you need to know how it operates what it's all about and how to use it as well so hopefully this guide has done that as I mentioned at the start of this guide if you have enjoyed it please leave a like on the video make sure you do leave your comments as well let me know what your thoughts are about Ultra Necrozma if you've tried it already or if you're looking forward to trying it or what your thoughts are just in general about the guide and what you'd like to see going forward with these guides as well we probably will readdress guides at some point I have a lot going on at the minute in my personal life so it means that I won't be committing to too many other guides but hopefully when I do find the time I'll be able to come back to it and maybe look at Mega Pokemon and some other non-restricted Pokemon in this format as well that we've not covered as much of in these little mini guide series that I've done but I hope you've enjoyed it guys. I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you all very soon with more content in the Ultra series. So until then guys, take care of yourselves. Have a great day, morning, afternoon, night, whatever time of day it is. And I'll see you all again very soon. So until then, take care and bye-bye.